Hello guys, uh, welcome to uh, IB Math Higher Level 202 Tip Questions and uh, yeah, I know uh, 202 is a critical year for you guys because it's your last IB exam for the O syllabus. If you fail the exam, then you won't have any chance to take this uh, retake this exam uh, next year because all the exam will be changed to new curriculum. Yeah, so Math AI and AA Higher Level, I believe you have heard of that. So uh, you basically can't screw up the exam. So um, for the Math Higher Level uh, Part 1 video, I will mainly focus on the complex number, counting, uh, counting principle, vectors, and functions, okay? So um, I have break it into two parts of video. So in this video, I'll go through Part 1 first, and then if you're interested in getting Part 2, then you can uh, go through, uh, go, go to the end of the page and you can just click the link and you can download the notes and also free videos for you guys, okay? So let's get it started. So um, tip questions for a complex number. So uh, for this kind of questions, um, it's quite typical, okay, for section eight uh, paper one questions. You can see that given that two plus three i a minus five b equals one plus nine i, find the value of a and b if a and b are real numbers, yeah? So um, basically they're just saying they're just uh, numbers but not uh, imaginary numbers, yeah? So just not to confuse you guys. So how do you do? How do you solve this? So because we know that the left equation equals the right equations, yeah? Imaginary number equals to the imaginary number. So first we uh, just uh, open the bracket first. So 2a plus 3ai and then minus 5b equals to 1 plus 9i, yeah? So um, then what do you do? So you know that the i, so I'll just rearrange that, okay? So the plus 3i, I'll put it at the back. Then you can see that 3ai equals to plus 9i. So 3a equals to 9. So a is equals to 3, okay? So that's how you get a answer, answer for a. And then for real numbers, so real, equals to real, yeah? So 2a minus 5b equals to 1. So how do you find b? We already have a, easy. So just plug it back in and then 5b equals to 1. So what is the answer for that? 6 uh, minus 1 equals to 5b, so just rearrange that, yeah? So b is equal to 1, yeah? Okay, so it's a very simple operation. And then next question. Okay, so next question, counting principles. So many students find it uh, very confusing when it comes to this topic because uh, you have to come up with the equation yourself, especially. So it's unlike other topics like differentiation and like vectors, uh, you're always given an equation and then just solve it right away, right? So for counting principle, they, you, uh, you'll be given the scenario, for example, like this question. So we have four physics books, four chemistry, six biology, one notebook to be placed on a shelf on library. And then uh, for same subjects, they are put together yeah, so I'll just write it in a simple word 4p 7c 6b 1n. Yeah, so which refers to this sentence and question A asks you how many different ways can the books be arranged? So you always think of the factorial when you're asked uh, like uh, different ways. Yeah, counting accounting principle, right? And then secondly, you have to come up with the big picture first. So big picture that means you have to group the things. So now we have four things right here. So obviously we have for factorial, so that's the number of ways. But uh, you have to think of like inside the small combination. So even like 4p right here, four physics books, they can randomly rearrange. So for this part, then you can have four factorial. And then for 7c, so well, you can also have like seven factorial. And then also for biology, you can also have six factorial. And finally, you can have uh, one and which is this, okay? That is the answer for A, yeah? So it's very simple. And then for question B, question B, how many different ways can the books be arranged if the notebook has to be put next to physics books? So basically, I'll just write it down again. So, but this time I will put the physics book next to uh, the notebook, so which is right here. So now, this three things, becomes, I mean, now we have like uh, three groups instead of um, in, instead of like two, uh, instead of four, okay? Because the two things have to be uh, like grouped together. So think, think of the big picture, one, two, three. We have three things, so three factorial. And then we look inside um, inside the, the, the combination right here, yeah? So we have four factorial times one times seven factorial 
and then times 6 factorial and that's it so you can see that it's really simple yeah because when you look at the big picture which is uh, like a 1 2 and 3 right here yeah so then we have 3 factorial to like uh, ha you, you can just randomly rearrange that and then you look inside the whole things right but one thing you need to think of is inside this yellow thing right the 4p and 1n they can swap with each other so you can have like extra two ways so times two okay so that is the final answer for this question okay so um function questions so function questions um for this question uh, is usually um, paper one question and then you're given two graphs so normally it's just one graph and then solving the x and y values so that is very easy question and then for this one is higher level so that would be like slightly harder so we have h of f x equals to six so how do you solve this without using the calculator yeah so first you need to understand the uh, equation function right so function h h of f x equals to six so look at outside first so hx which is this equation uh, this is this graph equals to six y equals to six so you can just draw a straight line horizontal right so you cut through so what what you get is first that we'll write hx equals to six okay and then we will know that inside this and this point which is fx okay so x is equal to fx right because inside the bracket so that equals to 0 and uh, and 6 yeah 0 or 6 so this is like a two-step questions and then after you get this then you have to solve for x so this is the final step so it's very simple it's just visualize so we just look at the other graph fx so that is 0 so you draw a horizontal line what you get is 0 Oh wait, sorry, it's negative 2 and 8. So x is equal to negative 2, 8. And then finally, for 6, for 6, which is at this point, yeah? So draw a horizontal line. What you get is 2 and 4. x is equal to 2 and then 4, yeah? Okay, so here comes the last question, vector. So uh, we got like two planes uh, equation, P1 equals x minus y plus 2z equals 2, and then P2 equals x plus y equals to one right so they're both perpendicular yeah so uh we we have uh show that or show that the two planes they're both perpendicular so it's very simple so if you're asked perpendicular that means the normal uh normal for uh the plane is perpendicular also perpendicular perpendicular also right so when i say perpendicular that means the dot product is equal to zero yeah so let's see if the normal is equal to zero right how do you get normal from the plane one just look at the coefficient in front of the unknowns right which is one negative one and two so one negative one and two dot okay dot so you can write in like the vertical bracket and then dot in a, another vertical bracket, yeah? Because uh, in this uh, word dot, uh, I, I can't type the uh, vertical bracket, but I think you'll get it because it's quite simple for this one. So one, for plane two is one, one, and zero because Z in front of that is zero, yeah? So there's nothing in Z, that means zero. One, one, and then zero equals to how many? So when you do the dot product, we just multiply and add it up together. One times one, which is one, and then minus one times one, which is minus one, and then plus this one is zero, two times zero. So obviously you get zero. So that's why the, the, nor, uh, the normal dot product is equal to zero, then that means they're per perpendicular, yeah? So, and then question B. So question B, find the equation of plane three, uh, which, which pass through origin. So origin, you can write it down. The uh, coordinate will be zero, zero, zero. If that is a 3D plane, yeah? And it's perpendicular to both plane one and two. So re remember, when two lines, they are perpendicular, the dot product is equal to zero, yeah? So line, Perpen, uh, perpendicular dot product is equal to zero, right? Okay, but when we're talking two planes, they're uh, we're finding like a 
uh, a plane, plane 3, perpendicular to both plane 1 and plane 2. Okay, perpendicular, perpendicular to two planes. Then immediately in your mind, you have to come up with the cross product to find out the normal okay so the normal of the plane so uh, basically what you do is uh, you have to think of the normal of this line which is uh, oh, this plane which is one negative one and then two and this time we do the cross product okay so one and then one and then zero so the trick is you have to think of dot product or cross product okay so for this uh, for this one I don't, I don't waste time on uh, teaching you how to solve the cross product I'll just give you the answer because I believe you know how to do it if, if you don't then obviously you can sign up uh, our vectors uh, vectors uh, lesson uh, online okay which I'll show you later so for now uh, I'll just give you uh, the answer right away which is um, negative 2 2 and 2 yeah so because it's a very simple cross product and then this one one would be the normal of the plane 3 okay normal of plane 3 so and then the next step you need to do is you come up with the general equation which is r dot n equals to a dot n yeah so r is uh, x y z x y and then z dot um, minus 2 2 and then 2 right because we have the cross product which is the normal equals to so this is how you find the vector uh, equation of the plane r dot n equals a dot n this is general equation equals to because it passed through the certain point a which is the origin 0 0 and then 0 and then dot minus 2 2 and 2 okay so, um, and then you just work on the dot product, which is just multiply all this equal to each side and then just group it all together, right? Oh, wait, sorry, this is dot, not x, yeah? So, uh, yeah, so I'll just do a, one step for you guys, then you understand what, what I'm doing. Minus two, and then uh, we plus minus two x, and then plus two y, and then plus two z equals two because this is zero, yeah? So, um, and then we just divide all that by, uh, all that by um, two, then we'll have negative x, oh yeah, this one is pretty simple, plus z equals to zero. That's it, yeah? So you can see that it's not that very hard. So the key thing is just think of cross product or dot product for this question. All right, um, that's it for part one video and I hope you guys find it helpful and uh, also you learned something in part one video. So if you're interested in getting more help and more videos, you can go to part two and go straight to this link. Then you can download the free videos and also free, uh, free notes, okay? So I'll cover more questions and harder questions in part two. And if you're interested in getting like face-to-face -face help uh, with our IB expert, you can sign up your trial lesson with us. So you can go straight to this link, yeah? So uh, just click this link and then you can sign up our free trial lesson if you're Hong Kong students, yeah? So what you can expect uh, in the lesson. So basically um, our IB tutors will, uh, with over three years of experience will guide you through like in the face-to-face -face lesson which will be one hour and you'll be given full concept notes and exam questions for a specific topic. And also each lesson will go through a lot of exam techniques and also exam questions just like right now, yeah? And and uh, we'll guarantee you find the lesson helpful and uh, also 100% satisfaction, okay? So um, you can just go straight to this link and then uh, if you're a Hong Kong student, you get a free trial lesson, yeah? And if you're overseas students, you can also sign up at this thing as well. And our staff will arrange with you and check the time zone uh, with you guys within uh, 24 hours. And here is just some proof uh, of our previous students who joined our program. So you can see that they all got at least one great improvement and on average they got at least two great improvement after joining our program for example like this student level four to level seven in math studies after nine months of uh, our lessons and also uh, like this student uh, he got um, five to six uh, in his math sl exam yeah you can see that and then also we have another student here 45 out of 45 and another 44 out of 45 who joined our lesson before so over 86 percent of students report to boost at least 
these by two levels or more in total, okay? So uh, I hope our lesson will help you uh, achieve the same as well in your IB exam. 202 exam is your uh, one last final exam. So if you screw it up, then you will have to go through uh, the new curriculum, okay? Which I don't think you want to like learn everything again, yeah? So um, yeah, so uh, if you're interested in getting extra video, go to part two. And then if you're interested uh, in getting like uh, in-person help, then you can go to this link.